welcome to Dry Tortugas. This is an all day thing. So it's gonna be a day full of adventure, snorkeling, exploration, history, animals. We're Howard and Caitlin New State. This year, we're traveling to 51 parks in 52 weeks. We're visiting all the U.S. national parks in the lower 48 in a special Winnebago Vista NPF limited edition. Each week, we're sharing where to stay, what to do, and introducing you to the people doing incredible work across our national parks. Well, we just finished one of the most beautiful drives in America. <laughs> And now we're at the end of the road. We're here at Boyd's Campground, which is celebrating their 60th anniversary of being the closest campground to Key West. And this is one of our favorite campgrounds that we have ever stayed at. We were here before in 2021 and just absolutely fell in love with it. It is family owned and operated. It has a fascinating history and all kinds of great amenities and activities. Yeah, there's pretty much something going on every single day. You can check the Boyd's website for their activity calendar, but then they also have on site, they have rentals for like kayaks and for stand-up paddle boards uh, and as I mentioned it's really close to Key West it's only a bike ride away or if you want to uber you can do that too the location is just incredible so the park was founded in 1963 by Boyd and Elsie Hamilton my grandparents and uh, started out as a small piece of land that uh, they built a house on and opened up the campground in the first couple of sites in first couple of seasons was about 20 to 25 sites in years uh, after they added to the park improved the park into what it's known today. It's a 13 acre waterfront piece of property with about 200 RV sites. You come a long way from those early days. And no matter what your camping style is, you can come here to Boyd's. There are spaces for all different types of RVs and even tent sites along the water. It's absolutely beautiful. Or if you don't have an RV or a tent of your own, you can stay in a couple of their tiny homes. And now that we're all set up, we're going to head into town, hit a happy hour, and also get the lay of the land for our trip tomorrow to Dry Tortugas, a park which we have never been to before. Our first stop was the Sales to Rails Museum at Flagler Station. Welcome to Fort Jefferson, as it appeared in the late 1800s. The front section of the museum has a replica model of Fort Jefferson, which is the main attraction at Dry Tortugas National Park. It's free to visit this area of the museum, and it's a great place to get an overview and some history before heading out to see it in person. We just hit happy hour number one at the Funky Rooster, which as the name suggests, is completely rooster themed, which is quintessential Key West. Howard and I have been to Key West many times and there is so much to see and do here, but this trip for us is really about Dry Tortugas National Park. So we highly recommend checking out our first video where we show you things to do like jet skiing, the Butterfly Conservancy, a ghost tour. There's tons of cool things to fill your time here in Key West. All right, now it's time for stop number two on our happy hour tour. This is the Thirsty Mermaid for some delicious happy hour. That was an amazing happy hour. We had oysters, mussels, ceviche, and some of the best wings I've ever had. Everything was on happy hour. It was like eight bucks each, a lot of food, and very delicious. So we are stuffed, and now we are going to go home and probably go to bed pretty early because we have a very early wake-up call for dry tortugas. Good morning. <laughs> it's early. Here's the Barriers. roosters. The yeah. roosters. Yeah. We got up at 5.30 in the morning, so that way we could head to Dry Tortugas. This is an all-day thing, so it's going to be a day full of adventure, snorkeling, exploration, history, animals. All right, we made it to the terminal. We have our boarding passes here. We're about to start orientation. This is such a unique park because there really are only two ways to get there, by air or by boat. And so we opted for the Yankee Freedom Ferry. You're gonna to wanna to bring some stuff like sunscreen, a towel, even a change of clothes. There's complimentary snacks, your breakfast, your lunch, complimentary drinks, and also included in the price are snorkels. They also have a tour guide who gives you narration while we're going out and back and also when you're on the island. Caitlin, what are you most excited about? Um, I don't know. I'm most excited about like the whole thing because this is such a unique experience. I feel like it's a bucket list item. We have been to Key West so many times and we have never had an opportunity to do this. It books up very quickly, so if you're coming to Key West and you want to do dry tortugas, make sure you make your reservations early. And if you're not successful making a reservation early, they do have standby. So I think it's about 7.50 a.m. They will release those tickets to people who didn't check in. So you might get lucky if that's your last resort. So folks, my name is Hollywood. I'm your tour guide today. And uh, in just a few minutes, you're gonna get a chance to meet the other five crew members, as well as Captain Meg, and uh, most importantly, in my opinion, 
our K9 units, uh, Madigan and Whiskey. This is like literally the highlight of the day for her. I just literally was like, I get to pet the dog. Don't forget to look at the National Park while you're out there. She could be out there too. Oh, oh, good. Okay. But don't forget, you're going to a National Park. Check it out today. <laughs> Dry Tortugas National Park is about 70 miles west of Key West, so it takes around two and a half hours to get there by boat. The water changes from a beautiful blue to incredible teal the further out you get, and you'll just be looking at water for the majority of the trip. There are lots of options for seating, either inside or outside, and there are plenty of good stories along the way to help pass the time. Pretty sure you're paying attention off the sides of the boat, and occasionally we'll have a turtle or two that'll stay afloat as we pass by. Now, the other cool part of this segment of our trip is that this is where Mel Fisher discovered the Atosha and the San Margarita Rex. Would you welcome Mel Fisher? Now, the Atosha and the San Margarita were a couple Spanish galleons that had left Cuba. They were bound for Spain, and they were laden with treasure. And shortly after leaving Cuba, they encountered a hurricane that pushed them up onto a patch reef to the south of where we're at right now. On that patch reef sank the two Spanish galleons, spreading the wreckage, the debris, and the treasure from those two Spanish galleons. Well, what we believe today is about a 10 mile area to the north of us. So right now we're literally going right over the debris field from those two Spanish galleons. Now, Mel Fisher, he was a treasure hunter who was bound and determined to discover the Atosha's mother load. And after many, many years of hard work and dedication, he eventually did discover the Atosha's mother load out here. And since that point in time, his salvage ships have pulled up about a half a billion dollars, $500 million worth of gold and silver, emeralds, pearls, other treasures and artifacts for the one we're passing through right now. And the cool thing is we see the salvage ships still out here working uh, on a regular basis. Although they have found half a billion dollars, they don't think they found half of the total. Uh, they're still hoping to find another 500 to $600 million worth of treasure from the one we're passing through right this moment. Welcome to Dry Tortugas. We made it. The boat ride was so nice. Two and a half hours went by very quick. And it was such a beautiful approach. And we got to see seaplanes landing. And as we were docking, I looked down and there were already hundreds and hundreds of fish. I'm so excited to get in the water. Dry Tortugas was originally called the Jefferson National Monument and was designated as such in 1935. It was later expanded and redesignated as Dry Tortugas National Park in 1992 in order to protect the marine ecosystems as well as nearby shipwrecks and the historic fort. There are no services here on Garden Key, but if you arrive on the ferry, there's plenty of drinking water, and the boat serves as the main bathrooms for all visitors while it's docked at the island. There are a very limited number of campsites with pit toilets for the campers, but we're told reservations for these spots go very quickly. Okay, so just like at Biscayne, we're gonna be dividing and conquering today. I'm gonna be doing the tour of the fort. Caitlin is going to be snorkeling and trying to get as many fish as she possibly can <laughs> on camera. Uh, I have no doubt she's gonna be successful given the amount of fish we've already seen and we haven't even gotten in the water yet. Okay, so Howard and I are dividing and conquering. I went and picked up my snorkel gear. I brought my own mask, which you can do, but they have everything if you need it. I also picked up my lunch on the boat. Uh, they had an option for a gluten-free sandwich, so I'm very excited about that. So I'm gonna go enjoy my lunch and then head out into the water. All right, lunch was delicious. Now I'm going to suit up and head out. The watercolor is just so incredibly beautiful and so clear. Always awkward doing the flipper or fin walk. <laughs> There are two options where you can enter the water, North or South Swim Beach. I started at the South Swim Beach and made my way around the fort. I recommend snorkeling along the outside of the moat wall. This is where I found the most amount of coral and fish. Otherwise, you'll be staring at a lot of seagrass and sand. Also keep in mind that if you come in the winter, the water will not be as clear as the summertime. That's because of the wind stirring up the sand and sediment in the water, but it was still excellent snorkeling. So at 11 o'clock, they do a brief 20 minute talk about the fort. And then if you wanna do an extended tour, they offer a one hour to an hour and 15 minute tour of the fort. Folks, this is one of my uh, favorite places on the entire planet. I've been coming out to the Dry Tortugas National Park for well over 20 years at this point. And there's a lot of very, very different things to enjoy out here in this park. But one of my favorite parts about this national park is actually the fort that's surrounding us right now. And I hope you don't think that this is your average size fort. This is a massive fortification. This is actually the third largest of the third system of fortifications built by the United States. It is also the most powerful 
fortification the United States built. This fort is designed to house 420 or more cannons, more than any other fortification of its time frame. But when you add to it, it's location. I think that makes it a little bit intriguing as well. When I realized how difficult it was gonna to be to build anything all the way out here back then, I was shocked when I found out the United States of America had decided to build the most powerful fortification the country's gonna build here. Especially, especially once you understand that even once this fort is finished, any ship can literally just sail right around the range of its cannons, right? <laughs> I mean, when I realized all this, it was just one question that immediately popped into my head. I'm sure you all think the exact same question right now. What? What kind of drugs was the person on that decided to do this, right? I mean, come on. And it turns out that this spot in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico, it wasn't just important to the United States of America. This spot has been important to countries for hundreds and hundreds of years. And to fully understand what makes this place so valuable and so important, I had to go back in time 510 years, back to 1513, because that was the year that Ponce de Leon originally charted these islands. But in addition to the islands, Ponce de Leon discovered two other things that were very, very important. But on either side of this island, there's a natural deep water safe harbor or anchorage. They are literally the differences between life and death when a big storm moves through here. Now, in addition to the safe harbors, Ponce de Leon also discovers that there was an abundance of sea turtles out here. And that sort of inspires Ponce de Leon to name these islands. He chooses to name these islands Las Tortugas. Now, Las Tortugas is Spanish. When he translated from Spanish to English, it literally means the turtles. But you understand, he didn't name these islands the turtles because he thought sea turtles were cute and, and he wanted a cute little name for his islands, right? When Ponce de Leon decided to write down Las Tortugas on a nautical chart back in 1513, I mean, come on, I mean, that's like you writing down McDonald's on a map today, right? It literally just meant food to go for those sailors back then, a resource they needed to know about. Okay, Caitlin. We've reunited. To recap my experience, Hollywood is an excellent tour guide. He seems like he is just on point. Well, his nickname too is perfect because his personality is totally Hollywood. <laughs> um, he's an excellent storyteller. He had lots of really interesting uh, things to tell. For instance, do you want to take a guess as far as how many times the fort actually fired on a ship in battle? Zero. It's zero. <laughs> it's true, it was zero. Well, cause like the way that he told the, in the 20 minute version that I attended, this was very, uh, you know, stake your claim. This is our land. And it was very preventative from something happening. And so it didn't sound like it was ever actually used in battle. Made it back on the bus. We're back. <laughs> this is a big tip for you guys. If you do plan on going snorkeling, make sure that you bring dry clothes that you can change into because on the boat there are freshwater showers and then you can hop back off and change other changing rooms and it's a much more comfortable ride home. I feel like the experience when you take the ferry is all inclusive. In my opinion, I think that it's an excellent way to experience dry tortugas. And I think that the amount of time on the island was just the right amount of time. Because it is hot out there and you do get tired in the heat. So I think I, I was satisfied. How about you? It's very satisfying. <laughs> I, I don't think I could ask for more. Yeah, and great. this is such a bucket list item for so many people. And I'm so glad that we're finally able to explore dry tortugas. Next week, we rocket up the coast of Florida for a quick stop at Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex and take a drive on the wild side at Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week.